Once again, I found myself changing the title of my sermon this week. Uh, originally, when I read this passage and came up, well, when I read Genesis and came up with an outline for the series, this one was called Abraham's Hospitality. But I sat and read it again on Monday and asked God to give me a sense of what we need as a community as we read this text, and it changed. It changed to Abraham's attentiveness. So it's the seventh week that we've been talking about Abraham, can you believe it? We've got two more after this, and then it's going to be Christmas. But today we're reading Genesis 18, and perhaps you'll be able to spot in this text the attentiveness of Abraham. See if you can find it as we read. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you've come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent of Sarah, to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where's your wife Sarah, they asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. And we'll read up to there. This is the word of the Lord, and we thank him for it today. I think one of the characteristics that is perhaps most lacking in our world today is attentiveness, the ability to pay attention. Some would argue that our culture has become increasingly distracted, right? especially since technology has become what it is. Uh, It has a lot to do with these wonderful little cell phones of ours. They're they're fantastic in many ways. But I know firsthand how this phone of mine can destroy my ability to be attentive to the things that matter. So nowadays I've got a smart watch as well, obviously for my running. It's great for that. And as you know, these types of watches connect directly to your phone. So every phone call or notification buzzes on your watch. I've recently disabled all the notifications on my watch because I found I could hardly go 10 minutes without you know, checking another message or another message, another notification. I, it totally destroyed my ability to be attentive to what I was doing, so I thought, okay, no notifications. For me, I like to use the do not disturb function on my phone. If I have to work, I'll put my phone on do not disturb so that I get no notifications and I can just focus. If I don't, I I just can't get any rhythm going. Maybe you can relate. But it's more than that. For me, I'm the sort of person who gets something in my brain and then that's what I'm thinking about even if I'm doing something else. And it's a problem sometimes. I have to say, don't think about that. Concentrate on this conversation or whatever's going on. I find it so easy to not be attentive because I'm, I'm in another world. Uh, a lecturer, a friend of mine when I was at the college used to say, talk about the one guy, the, the one student of ours was on a different planet. And so my lecturer friend used to say, oh, he's on the planet Zorg again. And sometimes I think Shireen thinks, oh, Luke's on the planet Zorg again. You know, totally in his own mind. I don't think that's how God wants us to live. So caught up in our own minds, or so caught up on our devices that we aren't attentive to what's going on around us. An author named Paul Bucknell wrote an article called Godly Attentiveness, which I read this week. Listen to these words that he wrote. He said, attentiveness is a crucial character trait found in Jesus and in all godly people. 
Godly attentiveness, he says, anticipates how to best respond to God and others around me. Have you ever thought about that? The way Jesus was attentive to people, not distracted, never distracted. And Abraham here in Genesis 18 shows a type of attentiveness that struck me as I read it this week. I wanna have that type of attentiveness in my life. Let me show you what I mean. Abraham here is attentive to God's people, firstly. We read how Abraham looked up and he saw these three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them, bowed low to the ground. He said, if I found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought. Then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you've come to your servant. Now the text says it was the heat of the day, and I wrote this on Monday, it was hot. It was like seriously hot today, it's now cooled out. But I thought it must have been so hot. And these men appear near his tent, and Abram immediately sees them and recognizes a need that they have. He's attentive to some needs, and he sees to their needs. If this happened today, Abram would have been inside, firstly, and he would have been on his phone. And those guys would have, would have stood there waiting for him and eventually left. But he, that's not how he is. He's not oblivious to the needs around him. He's not oblivious to what is happening around him. He's attentive. And Jesus was like this. Do you remember when Jesus was walking with that great crowd around him and the lady came and touched the hem of his garment and he, he knew Straight away he felt it. And so in this huge chaotic environment, he stops and he turns and finds her and he pays attention to her, gives her some care and heals her. I mean, even in his busiest, most chaotic moment, Jesus has the attentiveness to to see a need and to see to that need, to take care of that need. Is this the pattern in your life, in my life? Are we attentive or are we oblivious to the needs around us? You know, maybe there's somebody close to you in the same house even, or the same office, who really needs your encouragement, your blessing, and you're just oblivious. You're totally oblivious to what they need. Or you've seen it and you haven't done anything about it. You haven't voiced it. You haven't done what you've got to do. Maybe you've been knocking them instead of encouraging them. Maybe you're totally oblivious to what the the person right next to you needs the most. On the other hand, maybe somebody needs a break. Maybe somebody close to you just needs a break and you're oblivious. You're just pushing on them the whole time. And they actually need a bit of space. Are you attentive to what people need or are you just oblivious, doing your thing? Maybe the needy people in your community, on your street, in your complex, whatever, and you just don't even see them anymore. You know, how many people are on our streets these days? Do you still see them or do you just whiz past? Something that I try to do with people that I see on the streets begging is to simply acknowledge them. I can't give to all of them, but I can give them attention. I can simply Say, hello, sorry, I've got nothing for you today, but hi. And what I've found is just that acknowledgement can go a long way. Just giving them the respect of a bit of attention can be powerful in their lives. Uh, Simone Weil said this, attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. Attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. Are there people in your community around you that just need a bit of attention? Abraham here shows a very Christ-like trait, paying attention. And as it turns out, they weren't actually humans. Two of them were angels. One of them was God himself. And if we turn to the book of Hebrews, we see that the early Christians would use this story as a model for treating others. Have a look at what the author to the Hebrews wrote. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing... For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. So that's a direct reference to this story. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. 
Love each other, reach out to those in prison, show hospitality to strangers. It might be that you're entertaining angels and not know. That's why we're saying that song. Beautiful song to remind us of that. How attentive are we to angels maybe even around us that we don't know? Shireen has the story of her and her mom coming home from the Free State, I think, and they were coming down the highway and they saw a man and a young boy walking down the highway and they went, went past and they both sort of felt this, this sort of push from the Holy Spirit. So they said, no, let's go, let's go and find, let's go back and pick them up. It's wrong for these guys to be walking here at night. So they turned around and uh, found them as they came back and these two guys were on their way to Durban so they turned around and said, we'll take you to the next one stop. And they took them to the next one stop and went and got them a burger, gave them the burgers, sort of turned around and then they were gone. They'd like vanished into thin air. And there was nowhere for them to have gone. And it was, you know, they've always so spoken about these, these angels that they met on the road. And maybe it was God seeing if they were gonna help somebody in need, right? Are you attentive or are you oblivious? I used to sit on the car train and head to Pretoria every, every day. And everybody there was sitting with their earphones on, scrolling, scrolling on their phones. And then that's what I started to do. And sometimes I think, how many angels were there that I maybe missed? I was just oblivious. Here's an idea, okay? Every day when you do your prayers in the morning, um, simply add to your prayers a line or a sentence where you say, Lord, help me to be attentive today. Help me to be attentive to the needs around me. That's all, that's all you have to say. But maybe just having that moment of saying, I'm going to be attentive will help you. Ask for a Christ-like attentiveness to the needs around you. Without a godly attentiveness, you're gonna miss it. I find so often I look back on my day and think, you know, I was oblivious to, to this and that because I was distracted. I don't wanna be that person anymore. Let's have a godly attentiveness to the needs around us as we go about our days. But Abram is also attentive, secondly, to God's presence, number two. This is probably the more important thing, in fact. We read this, one of them, one of these three men said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return. So we learn that this man was actually God. Two angels and one of them was God. He was the one who promised to come back and find Sarah pregnant. And I love as I read this chapter how Abraham seems to recognize this as the interaction goes. He seems to kind of recognize that this is God. They almost missed it. But Abraham was attentive to see God's presence among them. How attentive are we to God's presence among us? Or are we oblivious? I'm using those phrases a lot. How attentive are we to the fact that God is among us? He might not be among us in the form of a, of a human, but his spirit is here. Do we, do we know it? I've got a lovely little book called Sacred Companions, which is about how to be a godly friend. It's a really lovely little book. One of the chapters deals with what the author calls soul attunement soul attunement and he talks about how his job in his friendships is to help attune his friend's souls to the fact that God is near and he writes this David Benner is the author he writes the notion of tuning ourselves to God reminds us that he is constantly communicating with us his word his creation his spirit all continually pour out his revelation and our job is to increase sensitivity to that communication and then he goes on to talk about how we can increase our sensitivity to God's communication with us through prayer, through scripture, through 
uh, meditating on Jesus, and through friendships. He said godly friendships should always be helping us realize that God is near. And I read this chapter and I thought, is this, again, is this my life? Am I attuned to God's presence? And am I the type of person that if somebody has an interaction with me, hopefully in some way it attunes them some, in some way to God's presence? Man, again, I think about how my devices get in the way of this. Another WhatsApp, another email, another phone call, another reel or silly video that I really don't need to watch. I find that these detune me to the presence of God much of the time. And so I try to follow as many Christian things as I can on my phone. I've got Christian pages and groups and channels that I'm interacting with to try and make sure that these things that I watch and these things that come at me are godly and not taking me away from him. You know, I think Abraham was attentive to his God and so he realized that God was, among, was close very quickly. Do you live with a deep awareness of the presence of God in your home? Is your home a place where you're just so attuned to God as you go from room to room? Or your office? Is your office a godly place in your mind, a sanctuary, a place where you know God is there? Every year, at the beginning of the year, I go and pray in Shireen's classroom, and we anoint it and everything, and we pray you know, for all the kids who are gonna be there. And the other day, she said, one of the other teachers in the middle of the day came into her classroom and she just came in and said, oh, I love this place. This is a peaceful place. And I thought, yes, that's, that's what it's about. That's what we've tried to achieve is for Shireen's classroom to be as godly a place as this church, for example. What about you? Is your office a place where you just are tuned into God? Your car? What about your car? Is your car a little mini sanctuary where there's much worship and prayer? The shops, wherever you are. The truth is he is with us wherever we go and if we can be attuned to that, we can realize the sacredness of wherever we are. But we have to be attuned to it. We have to be attentive to his presence and not distracted. You know that song that we sang just now, Draw Me Close to You, Never Let Me Go. I've told a story before about the man who wrote that song, Kelly Carpenter is his name. And he was working at his church, doing music every Sunday, doing all sorts of other stuff. And he speaks about how he suddenly realized that he'd been so busy working in the church that he was not attuned to God's presence anymore. And he could, he could do all the work stuff, he could sing the songs and maybe even preach the sermons, but he'd, he'd started to lack the awareness of God's presence. He went home that day and sat down at the piano and wrote, draw me close to you. Draw me close. I don't wanna be doing my thing and not know your closeness. So is there something in your life blocking this attentiveness to God's closeness? It could be a habit. It could be a sin. It could be just a way of thinking that continually pulls you away from God. It could be a lack of prayer, a lack of Bible reading, a, a, a misbalance, imbalance, shall I say, of godly things versus godless things. God wants to be close, and he wants you to know that he's close so that you can be attentive and enjoy his presence. I want an Abraham-like attentiveness to the presence of God, where I see him and recognize him, even in the ordinary things. But lastly today, notice in this passage how Abraham is attentive to God's power, thirdly. God says to him, why did Sarah laugh? And say, well I really have a child now that I'm old. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Love that, love that. That's kind of my takeaway from this whole passage. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Surely not. And he says, I'll return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. And then Sarah lies it says, no, I didn't laugh when she did. Abraham still believes that God has the power to achieve the impossible. He's attentive to this fact. He is cognizant of this fact that, you know what, it doesn't seem like it, but God is still powerful. And Sarah doesn't do that, she laughs. She says, there's no power in the world that can make me have a child at this point, it's impossible. 
And Abraham says, I believe. It's quiet faith here and the power of God is still there. Last week we spoke about El Shaddai. Do you remember this? God all powerful and all sufficient. Abraham is reminded here that God is still all powerful, still all sufficient. Do you know that today? Are you laughing such things off like Sarah saying impossible? We'll never, we'll never move on from here. This is just the way things are. Or are you standing in faith saying all things are possible with this God? Uh, we began the service with an old Crossroads song which we recorded back in 2013, something like that, 2014. And it said, there's nothing too big for my God. And no mountains too high with my God. Now, the Sunday before COVID broke out, uh, we had our last gig before the lockdown, and it was at a church out in Mayerton. And people were really starting to freak out. Some people were wearing masks, some people weren't. It was interesting to see how people were dealing with it. And it was that night that Cyril spoke to us and said, we're locking down. But that morning we were at this church and there was this sort of panic about this new thing that's coming around. And I always remember that we sang this song. I always remember we sang, there's nothing too big for my God. And it almost kicked off that season in my life at least with that thought at the, at the front. And it was a horrible season. There was so much death, there was so much struggle. But through it all, there's nothing too big for my God that was on my mind, that was the platform. I, I can remember talking to that church as we sang that song and said, we're about to go into a difficult time as a, as a world, right? But there's nothing too big for our God. Do you know this today, that there's nothing too big for your God? Are you attentive to this fact? Or are you oblivious to it and just carrying on regardless? Or are you every day standing in faith saying, I believe what is impossible for man is possible for God. And friends, remember, God's promise is not the same promise as he gave them. That was a very specific promise. For you and I, he's not gonna promise just to fix everything. And that's where some Christians kind of get it wrong. They say, God's gonna fix everything and I'll stand on that and then it doesn't happen. The person still dies. An accident happens and something terrible happens in your family. And then because you've thought, but God promised to shield me from all harm, then your faith starts to wobble. That's not the, the promise that God is giving you and me. He's not promising just to keep you from all harm. He's promising to deliver you through difficulties, to deliver you through whatever comes your way. Their promise was for an Isaac, but our promise, friends, it's not just for God to do what you want him to do, but it's for God to help you through whatever comes your way. I said to a friend on Friday, in fact, I said, there's two types of miracles. The one type of miracle is when God changes your situation. That's the one we all want. But the other type of miracle is when God helps you through your situation. And that's no less a miracle than the first type. There's nothing big, too big for our God. Yes, he might move the mountain out of the way for you, or he might give you the strength to get over the mountain, and that's as much a miracle. Whatever hardships you're facing, whatever struggles you're facing, be attentive to God's promise that nothing's too big for him, because he might move it or he might help you through it. He will come through for you. He will come through for you, friends but it might not be what you want. It might be what he wants in his way to get you through. Will you be attentive to that power? Will you live your days saying, Lord, I believe that your strength is gonna get me through. I believe that your power is greater. I believe you can get me over this mountain. That's faith. That's a faith that's gonna help you. A faith that's only expecting a pie in the sky, a million rand, you know, Hopefully God will make me win the lottery. No, God's going to help you through step by step. And think about Abraham. Think about how long he walked that road. He was 100 years old, you know. Think about how long he walked and walked and walked and God's promise was still true and he held to it. He held to it and eventually it came to pass 
Friends, God's promise to you to help you through will come to pass if you keep walking the road. So again, I ask you as we close, how attentive are you? Are you so caught up in your own thoughts, your own busyness, maybe even your own problems that you're not attentive to what God is doing in your life? Are you so distracted by everything that you can't even see the need of the people around you, the presence of God with you, the power of God in your life? Here's a quote that I'll close with from Vance Havner. He said, we can circumvent a lot of our worries by giving our attention to the good. Most of our ailments will die from neglect. What are you giving your attention to? And are you keeping things alive that actually are gonna die if you stop giving attention to them? Be attentive to the right things, friends. Abraham was, what a blessing God brought him for his attentiveness. And let's pray. Father, open our eyes to see you. Forgive us for being distracted. One of the enemy's main tools in our life is to distract us. So many of us can hardly sit through 20 minutes of anything these days. We're too distracted. Forgive us. Forgive us for not being attentive. And help us, Lord, to be attentive in the right ways. You've got people who need our blessing if we would just see them. You've got your presence close to us. You've got the blessing of your closeness. And yet so often (laughs) we don't even see it. Your power is so real and so often we just deny it. Father, forgive us for these things. Forgive us for being oblivious. Forgive us for being so in our own heads and help us to fill our lives with you so that we can see all that you want us to see. And so Lord, as we go back into our homes and our workplaces and our situations, go with us, we pray. Go with us and Transform our minds. Transform our minds so that instead of being all caught up in the wrong things, we leave those things behind and give our deepest attention and love to you and your people. How mightily you will use us when we simply give you our attention when we should. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's sing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord.